Hello and welcome to Flux Bench. My name is James and I'm a nerd and I hope you're a nerd too. If you ever want to get started in electronics and you don't know where to begin, well, it's very simple. Everyone starts by blinking a light and then pressing a button and seeing that it does something. Really, no matter what you want to do, you start there. All the links to everything are in the description. Zero of these links are affiliate links. I figure if you're getting into electronics for the first time, you need some honest recommendations. It doesn't matter if it's $25 or $50 or $100. I'd recommend getting our, an Arduino starter kit Make sure it has good documentation and make sure it has code examples to go along with it. Read the reviews. You can probably even get that documentation and that code example before you buy it. Does it look good? That's really what you're buying. You're not buying a fast forward. You're not buying a million sensors. All you're really trying to buy is the knowledge to get started. So for 25 bucks, get it from AliExpress. For $50, Get that same thing from Amazon, but just get more sensors and more of everything. For $100, spend your $50 the same way you did before, but then buy a couple of things from AliExpress and wait the three weeks. Perfect things are multimeters, soldering iron, things like that. You don't need them initially. And figure out what you like in particular. Are you crazy about LEDs and you want something you can change the color and do cool things with? Or are you into motors? You gotta figure out what you like, and I'd recommend spending that additional $50 to go from 50 to $100 budget by getting more tools and more things that you in particular will enjoy. So what do you need to actually get started in electronics? Well, I'll just put it this way. You don't know what you don't know. That's why I'd recommend getting a starter kit. It's got basically everything you need in it. It's gonna have LEDs, resistors, transistors, capacitors, diodes, MOSFETs. It's gonna have buttons, multiple LEDs, sensors of all sorts of types. And I bet if you get a 37 in one sensor kit, you probably won't use more than 10 of those sensors in your first year of electronics. So it really doesn't matter which one you buy. Just make sure you buy one that's got a decent amount of stuff in it, good reviews. But honestly, as someone who used to import these electronics and sell them on eBay, all you want is a good bang for your buck. All the stuff is the same. It's all going to be the same sensors. It's all going to be the same basic things. So just look for good reviews, look for good documentation and good code. Point of this is to get you started, learn the basics. And so that way, when you want to do probably the real reasons why you got into electronics, your own personal projects, you'll have a good amount of stuff to get you through those first projects. You'll have those capacitors, those resistors, buttons, LEDs, everything you need to get started in electronics will be in a good starter kit. You can definitely try to buy these things individually, but what you'll end up finding is that it'll tend to be a lot more expensive. You'll end up needing a lot of various little components that you just don't have. So. Again, I'd recommend just buy a starter pack. It's gonna probably be a lot cheaper and a lot less hassle than if you bought the things individually. So what kind of microcontroller should you get? Should you get a Arduino, an ESP32, a Raspberry Pi, a whatever? Just forget all that noise and just get yourself a cheap Arduino. All those other boards, you'll get to them eventually, but Get yourself a two, three dollar clone from Arduino, not the original, get a clone, and eventually just start buying other boards. They all pretty much work the same. So once you learn the basics of how to work with Arduino, maybe get yourself an ESP32. And once you kind of get comfortable with that and you need even more speed, maybe get yourself a Raspberry Pi. But the problem is that this is like a $50 board. And when you accidentally connect things wrong and the magic smoke gets let out, you're out 50 bucks and you feel really bad and now you're discouraged. First, if you broke a $3 board, who cares? Go get another one. Trust me, you're gonna be glad that you had all the simplicity and reliability of the Arduino ecosystem when you start out. Electronics can be frustrating. Things just don't work the way they should sometimes. And when everything is just a little bit simpler, things are more reliable and you have a lot less frustration. So trust me, just get an Arduino originally, upgrade to an ESP32 later. It's just a couple bucks more. There's no reason why you can't start with Arduino, go to ESP32, 
go to then Beagle Bone Black or Raspberry Pi or whatever the thing is that you want to do. All microcontrollers basically do the same thing. So get a cheap one to start and just start upgrading as you go. It's really tempting to want to just buy all the tools when you get started in electronics. There's so many out there, but really the only one you probably need to get started is a good multimeter. This box style multimeter never goes out of fashion. They're so good at what they do, they either basically work or they don't work. So if you have a box style multimeter, it's good enough to get started. Doesn't matter if it's $3 or $30. By the way, I've never spent more than around 12 15 bucks on a box style multimeter, they all work great. If you want to upgrade, I'd recommend getting a clamp style multimeter. You can clamp around a wire and see how many amps are flowing through the wire. You can technically can also see how many amps are flowing through this and out this, but let's just say I've broken more multimeters than I care trying to measure amps that way. So just get yourself a decent clamp meter. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it can measure DC. Most of them only work with AC. You'll have to spend a little more money to get one that's either DC or AC and DC capable. So once you got a multimeter, the next upgrade in your tool chest should be a decent soldering iron. Again, kind of like multimeters, they either work or they don't. They can be digital, manual, doesn't matter if they have a little dial or buttons, you're gonna set it to medium and let it set for around five minutes to warm up. When you start using it, if it's not hot enough, you turn it up. If it's too hot, you turn it down. That's it, so manual, digital, doesn't matter. None of them are accurate anyways. Once it gets hot, you're gonna notice your tip starts getting corroded, so you're gonna want one of these copper sponges. You simply take your soldering iron and just dab it in there. I'd recommend getting a little solder, putting it on the tip, dabbing, a little more solder on the tip, dab some more, and then you'll find it gets shiny again. The reason why this channel is called Flux Bench is Flux makes everything easier. Just think about this as the secret sauce for getting a good solder joint. You know how in welding they got all those crazy gases and chemicals and things they do to make sure things don't oxidate and you get a good weld? This is it. This is basically all that secret sauce is called flux. Make sure you use it when you solder. When you start soldering, it's tempting to start buying all sorts of things to help you. You can buy these crazy helping hands things. I don't think they actually work that well. You can buy absolutely ridiculous sized soldering irons, which you'll never need unless you do high power electronics. What you'll need is a little bit of solder wick. It's kind of like a sponge to water, but for solder. You'll probably want to cut off a little bit of it, maybe dip in flux if you have some. And then you can also use a solder sucker. You just push down a plunger, get your solder nice and hot and you can suck it away. Both these are kind of complicated and they have their own pitfalls. So I'd recommend learning about them before using them yourself. I have some links in, in the description for some good videos that I would highly recommend. I know these accessories make you look really cool, but honestly, you don't need them in starting out. You probably already have a lot of this stuff around your house. These are fancy anti-static tweezers that come in all different shapes and sizes. These are fancy wire cutters, but you know, any wire cutter will do. Wire strippers, but you could just use a wire cutter and be careful and cut off just the insulation. If you want, heat shrink tubing is a fantastic thing to have, and you can never have enough wires. I don't know why, but I've bought like 20 packs of these jumper wires, and I just keep on having to buy them every few months. So whatever it is you want to do in electronics, everyone's going to start the same way. Remember, blink a light, press a button, basic stuff like that. So whatever kit you get, ESP32 or Arduino, whatever you end up doing, the important thing is just start. You have to start somewhere. So go out there, make some awesome stuff. You got this.